mentioned free, um, freedom, which is the parents talk about how their children can run around. Like, let's say in the Caribbean, their children can run around barefoot around their house, or they can play in the way in the park alone in the Caribbean island. Because let's say if you live in an apartment, your children can't really run around and make that much noise because you have neighbors who might complain and it's more restrictive because of the environment that they live in the United States. And 29% of the parents who talked about complaints from their neighbors about the noise and no freedom to run barefoot in America. Because a lot of parents, for some reason, because they a lot of them, they came from the Caribbean within two years before we had the interview with them. So they would talk about the freedom of running around like in their, in their community or on their large space of land as compared to America where there's more limitations. And the cultural identity, a lot of their parents were concerned about their children losing their cultural identity now being immigrated to America. 29% of the parents talk about the Caribbean school uniform and American restrictions because in the Caribbean, the most children would receive a British education. So when it comes to America, a lot of the parents would be like disappointed because the school system wasn't as up to par as they expected it to be. And a lot of immigrants in general, they immigrate to America because they believe that they're going to receive more opportunities. But it was a completely contrary to many of the parents because they were disappointed in the curriculum because it was far inferior to some of the British schools that they had in the Caribbean. Okay, and these frequencies that I have here. Okay, the yellow stands for the Caribbean parents and the blue stands for African American parents. Um, in our sample size, there were more Caribbean parents who mentioned improvement of parenting. And this might not represent, you know, a whole community of African Americans or Caribbeans, but within our sample size, this is what we conduct, what, this is what we extracted from our data. So, and many of, like let's say, in improvement of parenting, there was a lot of Caribbeans who were interested in improving their parenting or actually exploring different parenting methods. While a lot of African Americans were more, they were happier with the way that they were parenting their children. And with discipline, many more Caribbean parents, they mentioned discipline or changing their way of discipline or they were concerned with discipline because the way that they might have disciplined their children in their home country they might not deem it acceptable in the American society, where only about 20% of the African American parents mentioned discipline and the environment. As I told you before, many of the Caribbean parents were more interested or more ah, were more disturbed about the environment than the African American parents. And this might not mean that they're not both as concerned. It can mean that since they're immigrants, they're not used to the environment as much, so it's more of a concern to them. And the African Americans, since they lived here for a long time, they might be a little used to the environment. So it might not mean that they live in any better environment, it's just that one is used to the environment more than the other. And for some reason, African American parents in our, in our sample size didn't mention violence while the Caribbean parents did. And like I said again, it doesn't mean that they're not exposed to violence, it can mean that they're so used to living here that it's not such a big concern to them. And both of the African American parents and Caribbean parents mentioned things about freedom and the restrictiveness within their communities. And Caribbean parents, they mentioned more about limitations, while in our sample group, African Americans didn't mention limitations. And cultural identity, most of them, most parents, not most, but they were almost equally concerned about cultural identity. And when it came to education, um, more Caribbeans were more concerned about the education than African American parents. Like I said again, it doesn't mean that African American parents aren't disappointed with the education, but it might be a cultural shock to more Caribbean immigrants because they're new to the country. And the discussion. Um, our research and our findings show that Caribbean parents actually emphasize the impact of the environment, like disciplinary methods on their parenting. Like, like most immigrants, Families, it's hard for families to adapt to a new environment. So they try to use new parenting methods that are more acceptable in their new community. And also, Caribbean parents were more disappointed by the limitations in their living area. Parents struggle to help their children maintain their cultural identity because, like I said again, a lot of immigrants, they worry about their children being too assimilated into American culture, and they want them to maintain their country's identity.
And the career finding goal, there's some similar, similarity between all black parents. Their parents, they want their children to have a better childhood than the parents had, because a lot of parents are very concerned about their children having a better life than they had. And traits like patience, leadership, determination are also highly valued because within our research, we realized that these were the main characteristics that most of the parents mentioned. And religion and church play also play an important role. Many of the parents were highly um, involved within their church and within their religion. And the transcript also indicates that differences exist in techniques by African American parents. So just because someone might label us African American, it doesn't mean that there aren't differences within African Americans. Because within the title African American, you have Africans who come from Africa, of course, and then you have African Americans, and then you have Caribbean, so you have all these types of people labeled under one title. And a lot of researchers don't realize that because of these cultural differences, you can't always do research on such a broad topic. Like, just do a research on, you know, black people or African American because there's different cultures within that one title. So, some parents rely on physical discipline while others do not. It was basically 50-50. A lot of parents, they thought that physical discipline was okay, while half of them thought that it wasn't. Okay, the next step, once the transcriptions are complete, our mentor, Dr. McWayne, and Madness, who was our co-mentor, will lead analysis on the transcripts. And if being found in the transcripts will we be used to create measures that will assess parent confidence because the research that we found, we're gonna use it to compile it in a parenting book. So we'll have, we'll create parenting books that represent different cultural groups and different races instead of relying on parenting books that exist in Barnes and Noble that are mostly based on white middle class parenting. So at a little at a time, we're gonna try to document parenting from different and diverse cultural groups, but we started out first with African Americans and Caribbean. And the second wave of the project involved examining the relation between parenting confidence and children's school readiness outcomes. So at the end, we want to show the correlation between parenting methods and school readiness. So we want to show what type of parenting aids children more for school readiness than others. But it's too early in the research to show this correlation because we don't have that much research down back. Okay, limitations on a study. Some of the answers to the questionnaires might not be truthful. With any kind of social science project, you have to realize that not everyone tells the truth. And within our research, we try to make people feel as comfortable as possible to give us the most truthful answers. But let's say if a parent's more, let's say if God forbid if they're abusive, I don't think they're gonna come to the interview and say that they're abusive to their kids. Like, of course, there's gonna be a little tweaking in their answers, but we're trying to get an overview on what parents believe to be good parenting. But you have to realize that any kind of behavioral science, you can't exactly know what's going on in a person's head. And the results may not be relevant to parents who do not fit the characteristics of the sample. For, like I said before, we documented parenting skills on low socioeconomic black parents. So if you go to an upper class black community, it might not be the same because they have more money, more opportunity, and they might have better schools and in, in a better community. Or it won't work for like a different race of people in a different location because we only concentrated on the city area. So if you went to Pennsylvania and tried to apply this research, it probably wouldn't fit as well. And only three of the New York City boroughs were currently represented in this study. So like I said before, if you were to go to Long Island and see a black community, this research might not be um, applicable. but we're expanding. So we're hoping that throughout the years, we'll be able to go to more areas and document the parenting. And the questions may not accurately assess the parent confidence because it takes a lot of long-term research to get a full view on what parents think for a certain cultural cultural group or race is really like, because you can't really study the rebirth and come to a big conclusion, but it, a little at a time, can't help. And the current study investigated in the, in the relationship between black parenting techniques and school readiness and preschool children. So that's what, that's what our main goal is, is to see how their parenting methods will affect children and be kind of well in school. And as far as the study has been done, we noticed that black parents, well, that parenting in black communities differs from middle class white community methods because of the cultural differences in the traditional values. So we can't think of a parenting book in Barnes and Noble that's basically mostly based on white parenting because there's not a lot of researchers out there who actually go and try to document black parenting. And a lot of researchers 
the, a lot of researchers that we have found, they normally say a lot of negative things about black parenting, so it doesn't really represent the positive aspects of black or African American, African American parenting. So we're trying to extract the positive aspects and what positive things they do that can assess their children and becoming ready for school. And overall, parents' ultimate goal is to see their children